Newly released documents show Palestinian negotiators secretly agreed to give up large tracts of West Bank land in peace talks with the Israeli government. The disclosure is among many contained in what's being called the Palestine Papers, thousands of pages of confidential Palestinian records covering more than a decade of negotiations with Israel. It's being described as the biggest leak of confidential documents in the history of the Middle East conflict. The more than 1,700 files cover a period from 1999 to 2010. They were obtained by the TV news network Al Jazeera, which began publishing details of the documents on Sunday. Among the leaked papers, the offers relating to East Jerusalem are the most controversial. Minutes from a 2008 meeting indicate Palestinian negotiators offered to allow Israel's annexation of all but one of the settlements built illegally in occupied East Jerusalem without receiving any concessions in return. Chief Palestinian negotiator Saab Erekat is quoted as saying, we're offering you the biggest Jerusalem in Jewish history, using the Hebrew word for Jerusalem. But Israel apparently rejected the offer. Then Israeli Foreign Minister Sipi Livni told the Palestinians, quote, we do not like this suggestion because it does not meet our demands and probably it was not easy for you to think about it, but I really appreciate it. Al Jazeera says forthcoming documents will reveal new details about compromises the Palestinian Authority was prepared to make on refugees and the right of return, as well as on the PA's security cooperation with Israel and its correspondence on the UN inquiry into the late 2008 attack on the Gaza Strip. Palestinian Authority officials have challenged the document's veracity. Chief negotiator Saab Arakat called their contents, quote, a pack of lies. For more, I'm joined from the Democracy Now! studios in New York by Rashid Khalidi. He's the Edward Said Professor of Arab Studies at Columbia University's Department of History and the author of several books, including Sewing Crisis, American Dominance in the Cold War in the Middle East, and Iron Cage, the story of the Palestinian struggle for statehood. We welcome you to Democracy Now!, Professor Khalidi. And can you talk about the significance of this trove of documents that have been released by The Guardian and Al Jazeera? This was the first of what is supposed to be four days of revelations of documents by Al Jazeera and by the British paper The Guardian. Uh, the concentration in the first group seems to have been on Jerusalem. And the revelations are quite striking. Uh, the most important, I think, is the degree to which not only Palestinian negotiators were forthcoming, but the degree to which the Israelis were unwilling to accept concessions. Um, it seriously casts into doubt the idea that Israel would accept anything but complete capitulation by the Palestinians to absolutely everything they're demanding on every front. Uh, we, we've heard about Jerusalem. There, there, is, there is presumably more to come. But another thing that uh, comes out very strikingly from these documents is the degree to which the United States is twisting the arm of the Palestinians, the degree to which American diplomats, whether Hillary Rodham Clinton or Secretary of State uh, Condoleezza Rice during the previous administration, are unsympathetic to the Palestinians and are in cahoots, uh, in Aaron David Miller's words, are lawyers for Israel. It's actually worse than, than Miller, who was involved in the negotiations for many years, uh, says, from, from, from these documents. Now, what about Saab Erekat saying this is all a pack of lies? Well, both Al Jazeera and The Guardian have uh, uh, claimed that they have very carefully investigated the, the provenance of these documents. Um, I think time will tell. Uh, we, we, we have no, we, I have no way of knowing. I, I think none of us have any way of knowing exactly where they come from. We are told that many of them uh, come from the negotiation support unit. Uh, watching Al Jazeera last night, it was clear to me that they look like they come from uh, within the Palestinian negotiating uh, a team uh, in terms of letterhead and so forth. Whether there could be forgeries among them, nobody knows. But many of these things, I think, fit the outlines of what we all knew, partly because people on the Israeli side, on the Palestinian side and the American side have said a great deal about the negotiations from 1999, certainly through 2008. And the broad lines of these, of these major concessions made by the Palestinian Authority in Ramallah, the broad lines of the intransigence of Israel, and simply refusing to accept concessions, or rather banking concessions, and then saying, well, now we want more. You, 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 it's not enough for you to give up 
the, the, every single settlement in Jerusalem except one. We want all of them. It's not enough uh, for you to say that you would make uh, uh, concessions inside the, whole, the old city of Jerusalem. Uh, we, want, we want more as far as the Haram al-Sharif is concerned. The detail is what is the most striking. And I seriously doubt that in some cases uh, somebody went to the trouble of forging things that showed exactly how uh, this process took place. So I, I, think the, I think that we're going to find that most of these documents probably are genuine. Uh, Professor Halliday, what most struck you uh, in these documents about the communities uh, that the PA was willing to give up? Well, in Jerusalem, there, there are several issues. One is that uh, the United States, which claims to support the position which is under, un, uh, undergirded by international law, that all settlement across the Green Line, all settlement in occupied territories is illegal, is a violation of the Fourth Geneva Convention, is basically pushing the Palestinians to uh, make concessions on that principle, uh, arguing that you will not have a deal. I believe this was uh, uh, Secretary Rice. Uh, you will not have a deal unless you give up. Uh, I think they were talking about uh, Ma'adi Adamim, a settlement to the east of Jerusalem, which, in fact, apparently the Palestinians accepted to give up. Uh, the point here is this: th this is Palestinian land, private property in many cases, uh, uh, across the Green Line in territory illegally occupied by Israel and into which Israel has been exporting its population in violation, again, of the Fourth Geneva Convention. That the United States should support a position in violation of international law might not be terribly shocking, but to see it laid out in this form, uh, I think, uh, calls into, into question, at the very least, not just the good faith of uh, uh, the American negotiators and of the United States in this process, but the good sense of anyone who would rely on the United States as an interlocutor or, or an intermediary with, with Israel. Other things that were discussed, such as the Hanum al-Sharif, uh, might be very shocking to people in the Arab and Muslim worlds, because it appears that the Palestinian Authority has agreed to some kind of shared sovereignty over the, one, one of the three most holy sites in Islam, a property that is the, the, uh, a piece, a piece of, of, of territory that's not just sacred, but is also the property of the Islamic Waqf in Jerusalem, and have accepted that uh, a, a committee of, 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 of international actors, none of whom are particularly sympathetic to the Palestinians, Saudi Arabia, Britain, the United States, uh, uh, and so forth, Egypt and so forth, uh, should somehow have control uh, over this uh, most holy site in all of Palestine to, to, to Muslims. Uh, this is pretty shocking. Uh, and the other report that we have just heard, the uh, Israeli government being cleared uh, in the attack on the Mavi Marmara, the Gaza aid flotilla, last May 31st, Professor Halliday. Well, I mean, this is a uh, th this is a, this is entirely expected. An Israeli government-appointed commission, rather than an in international commission, a dependent commission, appointed by the government rather than independent of the Israeli government, um, has come to a conclusion whitewashing the government that appointed it. I, I don't see why anybody should be surprised. Uh, it essentially hewed to exactly the lines of the Israeli propaganda offensive that was launched the very day that this ship was attacked, uh, which argued that the blockade of essential supplies from Gaza, which is a violation of international humanitarian law, is legal, uh, that everything that the Israeli uh, forces that attacked this ship did, including kill, killing nine Turkish uh, including one Turkish-American citizens, was legal. Um, essentially, this thing was written, or could have been written, insofar in, in as, as, as what we've seen so, so far of it, uh, by the same people who were in charge of Israeli spin management. It's taken them a number of months to produce it, but uh, uh, the, the Israeli government spokesman could easily have written this. Every, every, almost every key argument in this uh, uh, commission report uh, was put forward by the Israeli government spokesman at the outset of this affair. Professor Khalidi, I want to thank you for being with us. Professor Rashid Khalidi is the Edward Said Professor of Arab Studies at Columbia University. Pleasure. He's written a number of books, including Sewing Crisis, American Dominance in the Cold War in the Middle East, and Iron Cage, the story of the Palestinian struggle for statehood. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, we'll, we'll talk about the Sundance Film Festival here in Park City, Utah, and a remarkable new documentary that's come out. It's called Black Power Mixtape. We'll speak with Danny Glover. Stay with us. When I 
to a throne stronger than rome but violent prone poor people's own but it's my home all i have known where i got grown streets we would roam out of the darkness i came the farthest among the hardest survival learn from these streets it can be bleak except no defeat surrender retreat so we struggling fighting to eat and we wonder when will be free so we patiently wait for that fateful day it's not far away but for now we say when i get older i will be stronger they'll call me freedom just like a waving flag and then it goes back and then it goes back and then it goes back and then it goes when i get older i will be stronger they'll call me freedom just like a waving flag and then it goes back and then and then it goes back oh, oh, oh. so many wars settling scores bringing us promises leaving us poor i heard them say love is the way love is the answer that's what they say but look how they treat us make us believers we fight their battles then they deceive us try to control us they couldn't hold us cause we just move forward like buffalo soldiers we struggling fighting to eat and we wondering when we'll be free so we patiently wait for that fateful day it's not far away but for now we say hey when i get older i will be stronger they'll call me freedom just like a waving flag and then it goes back and then it goes back and then it goes back and then